Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, I have yet another interesting product. It is the 4 watts 5.8 GHz amplifier for RF. And it arrived in this box here. In the box, you have the amplifier itself, an antenna, a DC adapter, an SMA to SMA pigtail, and a 2 pin to UK type plug adapter. Recently, one of my friends bought the Shark Byte system. It's the HD FPV system similar to the DJI Digital FPV system, but it is released by Fact Shark. In this video, I'm going to test this 4 watts amplifier on his Byte Shark transmitter, and we'll find out how much gain we'll get with this device in terms of the range and performance. In my previous video, I have tested a 2.5 watts booster on the Fact Shark Byte Frost, which is the prototype version of the Byte Shark. I'll post a link to that in the video description below, so do check out that video. Now let's take a look at the weight of the amplifier itself. Well, that's 174.4 grams. It's too heavy for flying. And since I've removed the screws, I could take off this lead. With the lead taken off, it's still 145.8 grams. Too heavy for flying. The reason for that is the metal used is not aluminum. I believe it's a kind of lead material which is good for RF shooting, but it's really too heavy for FPV flight. So I'm going to replace this case with an aluminum one. The replacement case would be this one here. It's a lightweight aluminum case from a 40 DVR HD recorder. And the thickness of the metal is sufficient to shield the RF noise. Well, let's measure the weight of this aluminum case. It's 50.2 grams, which is not too bad. So we will use that. And by the way, here is the data sheet. This device operates for the frequency range from 5.725 to 5.85 gigahertz. And the maximum voltage is 16 volts. So 4S would be too much for it. And the maximum output power, 37 dB. That's about five watts. Once these SMA plugs are removed, it's easy to get the main board out simply by removing the screws here. Alright, we have the main board out of the case and this is how it looks like. Alright, in this shot I have the amplifier here, it's not connected to the VTX, this is a normal VTX and it's transmitting 5.8 GHz at 200 mW with the camera looking over there and this is the fan to cool it down Let's see how far it transmits Okay, and here there's this big wall and I have the receiver here. That's the image. I bring. No antennas on the receiver. So that's the image we are getting right now. Now in this shot, I have not moved the antenna, it's still in the same spot. But I have the amplifier between the antenna and the VTX. Now let's go and take a look at the receive signal. Again, the same wall. This is the image now. Look at that. Definitely better than before.
Again, no antennas on the receiver. This image is actually flyable, although it's grainy. So yeah, the amplifier works great. Alright, here's a close-up of how I've soldered the coaxial cable to the RF in and to the RF out. For the signal element, make sure that you do not have a long cable sticking out of the braided wires. I keep it as short as possible. And the braided wires are soldered to the ground tabs here. Now this is the case that I mentioned that I will use. To install into this case, what I've done is I got myself this U channel. You can find this from hardware store easily. The main bar is secured to this piece of metal using the screw here. And this hole has been tapped, so we do not need any nuts at the back. The idea is to have this piece of metal slot into the slots here. Finally, the force amplifier is complete with this new aluminum case and you'll notice there's an opening here for airflow. I plan to use one of these two fans here to cool down the main board inside. This is the 12 volts version and this is the 5 volts version. When I tested the 12 volts one by having its power tapped from these lines here which are also running 12 volts, I noticed there were lines in the video. So off to plan B that is to use this 5 volts fan and have it powered separately with a 1 cell LiPo pack, a small one, to keep the weight down. Alright, I have the 5 volts fan running off this small one as LiPo pack. And everything has been hooked up. And it's working. After 2 minutes of runtime, you could see lines in the video. Unfortunately, the amplifier has overheated. The 1S LiPo pack could not provide enough power for the 5V fan. Alright, here's the new setup. The 5V fan is running off this 5V regulator. And the regulator is powered by the same battery that powers everything else. There are two advantages in this setup. The first advantage is we no longer need this 1S LiPo pack to run the 5V fan. The second advantage is the 5V regulator is also a filter which filters off the noise coming from the motor of the fan which causes lines in the video. Well, that was a few clips of how I attached the MMCX connector to the coaxial. I had to remove the RPSMA connector in order to hook up this amplifier to the shark bite air unit, which uses the MMCX. I apologize for this long video, but at this stage, the amplifier for the shark bite is finally complete. You notice these two pins here. I had removed them from this connector here because we will be soldering the power cables to the shark bite to the negative and the VCC. You notice this connector here. When I unplug this, it allows me to power off the amplifier and that way I will just have the power supply via these two wires to the shark bite system. Alright, here we go with the first flight. This is the shark bite 500 milliwatts output power with no amplifier on board. I mean the amplifier is on board but it's not turned on. That's what I'm trying to say. And I'm trying to fry behind these bushes where I will get a very bad signal. And let's see what kind of video degradation. I just have to hang on here and keep pushing the drone and now the video is back to normal. Alright, now I'm going to make a right turn and try to head to the trail. You see that walking trail there, I used to walk, I used to fly my drone down this trail. But it's kind of difficult to do it right now with the increase in mass and the tune the tune of the quadcopter is now terrible. I should have tuned the flight controller, but I didn't. So I'm struggling now with um, the roll response. So 
I should probably add, sorry, I should probably remove the expo from the aileron to make it more responsive. But too late for that now, so I just have to keep flying. Now let's get some distance to see how the video degrades in terms of distance. On the right hand side you can see the pond and I'm keeping to the left to avoid dropping the quadcopter into the waters. Okay, there's some video degradation there and let's turn back before anything bad happens. The video is kind of noisy here, although it's line of sight really. I'm pointing my patches on the shark bite to the drone by turning my head to the left. I try to do that to be consistent for both flights in order to have a fair comparison. Alright, let's try to get behind these trees. If the sluggish roll response is really hard for me to shoot through an opening, but I'll try my best here. Ah, I'm really struggling. And the signal is dropping. Ouch! Alright, hit that bushes, but that's fine. I try to avoid the bushes here. Alright, for a second right. flight, I have connected the power via these plugs here for the amplifier. So when I plug in the balance connector, it will supply power to the amplifier. And we have the clover leaf here, which is the output from the amplifier. And the input here, the signal comes from the sharp bite system. And this little battery is basically just an insurance. It's to power a separate fan to cool the sharp bite system, although it isn't really necessary. Alright, this is the second flight. I'm really excited because now I have the amplifier turned on. And the sharp bar is now outputting a lot more power than 500 milliwatts. Not sure exactly how much the output power, but yeah, now I'm behind that worst spot. And oh no, there's some video degradation. Oh, that's really bad. It's slightly better in terms of video degradation now, I suppose. But I don't expect that to be honest with the amount of output power. I'm expecting crystal clear video, but that's not the case here. Oh, by the way, I have um, tuned down the expo. So the row is a lot more responsive now, and I could now fly along this walking trail. Oh, that's really bad. So penetration is still as terrible as before. Let me try to go one more round behind the bushes, the thick bushes where the signal is at its worst. Uh, but before that, let's see how the signal degrades in terms of distance. Just like what we did before, I'm flying towards the pond, keeping to the left to stay out of the waters. And yep, around this spot, there's some video degradation. Seems to be better now. But I could see, still see some video degradation here. Okay, I'm turning back at the same spot. And remember, this spot is with the amplifier turned on. So I'm really expecting a better video, but I'm still getting all this noise. Which is really kind of disappointing. Anyway, let me head for the bushes, get behind the bushes and see the video degradation once again. Try to keep my patch pointing towards the drone now by turning my head to the right. Oh, the video looks good. Oh no, that's the video degradation again. Yep. Not what I was hoping for. Anyway, I'll bring it back and then we'll wrap up this fight. Now that was a quick test of the amplifier on the shot bite system. 
I must say that I'm really disappointed because there isn't a big difference in performance in terms of the range and penetration. I mean, there's a slight improvement, it's noticeable, but it's not as much as I hoped for using this 4 watts amplifier. Anyway, thanks for watching and see you again.